Welcome back to the Win With Dice podcast, a podcast featuring members of the Win With Dice team. I'm Calvin, and I'm joined here by Ramon. Hey guys, welcome to the Win With Dice podcast, a podcast all about tabletop RPGs, running them, playing them. Uh, Calvin and I are both DMs and have played in each other's games and played in lots of games, so we're just trying to share our experiences to you guys so you guys can, you know, learn a little bit or just be entertained with our stories. And uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're so, so that's what we do. <laughs> yeah, it's also an excuse to talk about, like, just, you know, just talk about our friends' games or something we love to do. Uh, I also can talk about some stuff that I've run and things like that, which, you know, I, I need an excuse to do that every single week. Uh, we did take a week off last time, uh, just because there was some sickness and need for refreshing, but now we are back and better than ever. Yeah, ready to go. So let's hop right on into the show, because I got a couple of sessions to cover this episode, so... Hopefully I can squeeze it all in, because there were some pretty dramatic stuff, actually. Some family revelations, uh, some backstory revelations. Uh, certainly the last session I did yesterday, I felt very unprepared for it, but then uh, I was able to do a lot of playing off of another character's backstory. So that kind of helps. So nice, nice. I want to get into that, but first got to start off with the most important part of the show. The Win With Dice Weekly GM Tip of the Week. All right, all right. Totally thought ahead on this one a little bit. Probably too far ahead because I forgot it a lot of it, but I have the notes. So, you know, I'm learning a little bit from Calvin put, yeah. putting some notes down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was saving this one for maybe like another Lancer episode or a Lancer month, but uh, I'm going to use this one here uh, specifically on like you know, uh, narrative roles or like those skill-based scenarios that, you know, your, 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 uh, your party is trying to, to deal with. Like Calvin's infamous water traps where <laughs> the, the poor PCs are just drowning. Sure <laughs> like, are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really hard to, at least in, in like Dungeons and Dragons and Pathfinder, uh, to resolve scenarios that don't require the, the minusing of hit points <laughs> mm. <laughs> like you know the zeroing out of the the hp um so ki- kind of like guidelines uh i, I kind of thought about it. it's like it's mostly either like all right we're all going to help one dude solve all our problems or the entire party is going to try and get x number of successes kind of like a group role right so uh yeah like i would say that's you know um uh, Typically, at least in Lancer specifically, because, you know, they have their mechanic where you add like accuracy onto rolls and people are helping out. And basically it's like one to nine, you fail, uh, you know, uh, 10 to 19, you pass like kind of like that middle ground, like you did it or you did it, but you stumped, you failed forward or like, you know, 20, you, you just, you destroyed it, right? Like you, you crushed it. You, you guys saved everybody, princess and the dragon, you did it right. But like, um, I was I was uh, uh, trying to hammer out some some things that it dawned on me that you know a lot of times I think I would like to resolve uh, narrow situations with like a single die roll. I think to me it seems to be like the best because you can go ahead and add all those uh, different stuff together into like a like a montage, right? I kind of want to condense everything into a montage where like you know it's like oh we have to fix this boat, like everybody you know someone who's the best. Uh, boat fixer or whatever the best crafting skill or shipwright skill or something like that they're gonna go and make the roll but everybody else still gets to help right like maybe the 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 smart guy gets to use some of its smarts on like you know materials and like the the big guy gets to roll like strength or something because he's helping lifting all the mass and all that crap right right um you know instead of it being like maybe the party does individual roles, but like, I I like the idea of like the montage where everybody gets to help out a little bit, but one guy is kind of running, like coordinating everyone or basically like is in all the scenes. So you get to be like, you know, like Calvin's, you're you're the character, like Calvin's in the scene, but the big dude helps him out, but then the big dude rolls low. So he like bonks you on the head or something like that. But ultimately like you, you get the mass up and and it, and it, it brings together like the idea that of, of like the teamwork that comes with being in a party. Uh, you know, uh, the 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 hardest part I think is is bringing like, uh, or at least the hardest part and the, the part that I love the most in in like uh, uh, team games or like even like uh, in media like you know the with big groups is when the group comes together and solves a problem together and it's like kind of like the uh, 
you know, I was going to say the Avengers, but I guess, yeah, the Avengers, where, like, everybody teams up for the first time or, like, teams up and does those cool, uh, you know, working together kind of deals. And uh, could it have some real, um, you know, narr- cool narrative moments where characters get to uh, tell how, you know, somebody helps somebody out or, like, maybe there is, like, uh, begrudging, like, uh, animosity between two party members and they, they resolve it over, like, you know, uh, chopping some wood or something like that one time. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 get the, I understood that reference. So do you, you mean, know I mean just like adding more, like aiding other people in group checks or just narrating more so that you're working together than that you're each contributing towards? Like, like in, instead of each of you doing your own individual thing that contributes towards a goal, do you mean like the party is specifically trying to assist each other or one specific yeah. person in some way? Exactly, right? So like, you basically you're trying to resolve uh like the entire situation with one role right but Mm. because of the the mechanical framing of assisting it helps drive the narrative okay like how how am i actually going to assist this person doing the task right okay because the person with the highest stat is obviously going to be like oh yeah i know my character i built my character to be good at this it's probably linked to their backstory they're probably like yes i've been talking about ships for like five sessions now i finally get to fix the ship right and then it's like, you know, that person can be the, the basically the lead in the scene and everybody else can be the supporting characters being like, OK, well, you know, I'm the dude with all the money. I'll make my money roll and I'll buy all the stuff. And we get a cool little montage of like a shopping scenario or something like that. You know what I mean? Like it's mm. it's it's like because of the mechanics kind of lead into the narrative. I think, you know, party roles are really cool and we should do that more. Yeah, definitely. Um Certainly, like, if you come across a situation where you know there's one person who can specifically do this thing you're trying to do, um, that's a great way for either as a GM to encourage players to do it, as a player to also try to jump in and, you know, get yourself involved with that sort of thing. Oh, um, yeah, for sure. Yeah, and it, it also leans towards, because, you know, a lot of times uh, the games kind of split between, like, uh, uh, I would, uh, like, actors, right? Like, you know, the people who want to be in the spotlight the most. So let them, you know, they usually have the characters with the highest amount of skills. They usually want to get into the role-playing aspect of stuff. So let them set the pace, but also bringing people who are not so comfortable with it, but, you know, let them play a smaller part. So it's not just like, okay, so what do you do? All right. It's like, so, you know, how are you going to help me? So, you know, it already prompts people to like, you know, uh, get involved and, and join into the, the narrative fun. Right. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you definitely want to find ways to encourage the quiet players to join in. Um, yeah. So that everybody can have fun. Yeah. All right. So that's our uh, weekly GM tip of the week a way to navigate working with uh, group checks. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Also, uh, it's, guys, we're recording on Halloween. Happy, happy oh, Halloween. Geez, we are, yeah. <laughs> happy. It's the end of the spooky month. Uh, you know, so <laughs> I hope I hope your month was uh, full of, uh, you know, fun and candy and spooky scary stuff uh as well uh yeah yeah you'll be hearing this at the beginning of november so enjoy your holiday shopping <laughs> yeah <laughs> you ready for the christmas music because here it comes probably already here frankly <laughs> uh but yeah let's uh let's get into the show so um i've talked about this on here a billion times the crown of dragons campaign my homebrew campaign that i've been running for my friends uh started off as me having no idea what i'm doing back in 2018 and now i have well now i i still have no idea what i'm doing but i wrote down some things (laughs) uh i guess is the best way to describe it so the main thrust of the campaign (laughs) is (laughs) don't Calvin, that's like all GMs ever is like, I don't know what I'm doing, but we're playing anyway. Like, <laughs> Yeah, basically. That was that was certainly what yesterday's session was like. Um, but yeah, the main the main goal of the campaign is to recover the Dracoronum, or the Crown of Dragons, because I like to blend two Latin words together and think it makes me sound smart. Um, it's essentially a crown that can contain uh, several different orbs of dragon kind and then be used to control dragons. Uh, the party found some information about where some parts of it may be kept, and they've been sort of on the way to deal with part of that. Uh, but something they've been sidetracked with, uh, and I've also been throwing more things in front of them, is that one of the characters got a note from their all-powerful patron informing them that, that, that they had to be at a certain location before the end of the year. 
Uh, fortunately, going to that location also meant being on the way to a part of the Dragon's Crown that they could pick up. So the party's been sort of heading that way. Uh, I've been throwing different frustrations in front of them, uh, slowing them down for no particular reason. Uh, but they yeah, are. Yeah, of course. It's, it's not like they have to get somewhere at a specific time, right? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they are a few weeks away from the end of the month. Uh, last we talked about this, they were in the middle of a... They're getting into, like, the more populated areas. So they're just leaving, like, a big city that's full of, like, crafters and inventors. Uh, there's some people working on large autonomous creatures and their rivalry going on that the party has sort of found themselves in the middle of. They recovered an object that was part of this rivalry in a different location and now discovered its purpose. But they decided to move on, leaving things as they were um, at the end of the last session, or a couple sessions ago. Uh, they were being followed by a mysterious figure that was able to escape their pursuit, but did follow them somewhere across the landscape since they left the city. Uh, so we Ooh. pick up with session 28, according to my notes, which is uh, madness. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and I can't wait till it's like session a thousand or something. It's like, <laughs> and then it's like we finally found a like one dragon orb. Like, <laughs> I, I don't know if I'm gonna like change up the pace of it, like because on my campaign's calendar, they're getting into the next year uh, or the new year of the calendar, rather. I don't know. I feel like I want to change up the pace a bit, but uh, I kind of like <laughs> I like the journey of frustrations. <laughs> it's just too many. Sewer notes to do. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, uh, session 28. It started off with some travel, and again, I was just using, like, my old uh, travel table. Uh, and sometimes I would have to, like, add new things because we did end up using a couple of things more than once. Uh, not in this case necessarily, though. Uh, they came across what just looked like a broken archway, uh, and there were a couple of giant rats inside. But they were able to find a coin purse inside the rat's nest. Uh, there was a very awkward incident as they were camping later and the rats returned for revenge. Um, <laughs> the person who was camping, they rolled a one on their perception check. And I was like, oh, great, I got you. Here it comes, a giant <laughs> rat. <laughs> uh, but the rat rolled a one to attack. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody was just kind of standing awkwardly. And you're like, hmm. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it was a very... It didn't really work out for anyone. The rats ran off uh, pretty quickly after that. Uh, the next day, uh, they ended up uh, in a... It was supposed. To, it was more of a narrative slash combat encounter. Um, I did, like, add new things to my list of creatures because I saw, like, a cool creature, and I was like, this thing's neat. I want to use it. Um, and it was an icicle snake. Which is basically like a snake made of ice that can hold so still it looks like an icicle dangling off of a tree. Oh, that's uh, a cool, uh, you know, uh, I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> it's like, oh, it's kind of cold. I said, ah, snake. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, there was like a whole bunch of those because they're not particularly high level and I didn't want to just, I should I could have just boosted them, but I like the idea of a low level swarm uh, mm -hmm. so I could put like a whole bunch of them there. Uh, so they were able to notice what these creatures were. They tried to stealth around them, but weren't able to necessarily do so successfully. Some of them went out to investigate, and a fight started. Uh, the party was able to fend them off, but I you know I got to use a cool creature, so maybe I'll do a larger version of it in the future. I just think it's a really cool concept. I mean, like that—that's a hell of an adaptation to be like, yes, form of acid icicle. Like, <laughs> I can only exist in like cold-tempered climates, right? Like, yeah, man, because like, it's in—it's like the middle of winter, so. Cool, cool, interesting. All right. And yeah, they took watch again. Um, at that particular night, one of the one of the players was able to see the figure following them from the city, uh, but they were very much keeping their distance. Um, and they made sure to inform the rest of the party about it. Uh, the next day, so I have been... I don't know why I got into this, but I have been, like, randomly rolling weather for the party as they're traveling, like, for each day. Uh, on the Don John site, there's a thing that's like a random weather generator. <laughs> on that particular day, it gave me a snowstorm. So I described it to them. Uh, the party did buy winter clothing a while back, so I was able to help them with like any 
like fortitude saves or anything like that on like particularly cold days. Uh, but they chose to camp out that day, and I was like, yes, please waste another day. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like there's, you know, a deadline or something. <laughs> <laughs> So they just rested up that day. Um, if I look at their calendar, I can tell you specifically what day it was, but it was sort of like the end of the 11th month of the year around then. Oh my god. <laughs> Get so close. <laughs> That's making me nervous. <laughs> uh, but then the next day, so this is where things get interesting. So uh, one of the newer characters, a fighter by the name of uh, Edgar, um, he is a pretty strong and... <laughs> He, he, you, you know that one party member who's like, I gotta try to kill this person specifically? He's that guy. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice. But he does have a history in this region. Uh, as the party was walking along, they w walked into what seemed at first like an ambush, but it was led by the town guard of the nearby town of Dunshold. And leading that guard, it was a character named Athilda, who bore a striking resemblance to Edgar. Oh. She was, in fact, his older sister. And mentioned that their family was part of the ruling family of Dunshold itself. Damn, man. Walked into that narrative moment right there. <laughs> sure like... did. <laughs> Definitely got Helen. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> so, yeah, then they had to just stop and catch up. Uh, essentially... Um, Edgar finally explained his backstory to the party, which he had been largely hiding for some time. Uh, and now that he's actually talked about it, I can talk about it. <laughs> oh, yes, finally! <laughs> so, uh, Edgar explained that after his training, he had been working for one of the previous lords of one of the regions, uh, by the name of Homeloaned, uh, because I gave everything a random generated name, uh, several years ago, <laughs> but... Um, he had been working for the Lord of Homeland, uh for some time, but then uh, they had ended up being ambushed while on a quest for a mystical item that the Lord was suddenly obsessed with. They were ambushed by a bunch of necromancers, and Edgar was the only one to make it out of there uh, unharmed. Uh, the Lord himself, Lord Randiel, he had been infected with some sort of necromantic magic or disease, uh, one that caused him to die soon after. Uh, now, Dunshold did have sort of a upstanding reputation of, you know, warriors, knights, things like that. But after this whole incident, it sort of negatively affected the perception of the town, as well as, of course, Edgar himself, who sort of went into hiding uh, in a ways, uh, joined the Adventurers Guild to use that to travel far, far away from his home where he lived some distance away doing quests and things like that until he ended up with this particular party of adventurers. Um, and his sister kind of mentioned like how severe the impact on the town was because Edgar kind of disappeared after all of that. Mm -hmm. uh, but they all were also able to catch Athilda up on... Athilda being his sister. I don't know if I mentioned. I feel like I mentioned. Uh, <laughs> catch her up on everything that they had done, including the defeat of Kaivanth. Uh, Blue Dragon Ascendant, or whatever wacky title I gave him. <laughs> ultimate, <laughs> ultimate oblivion form. I'm still waiting on that, Calvin. I'm still waiting on Kaivin. Mm. <laughs> Kaivin reborn, damn it. <laughs> Give it to me. <laughs> Maybe. I wanted to show up and transform. I wanted to be a transformer too. It'd be pretty funny. <laughs> Don't you worry none about that. <laughs> Yeah, you should, you should have a boat for him, like Kingdom Hearts. It'd be pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> I know what I want to do with uh, with Kai Vanth, which, as as we meant, as I mentioned last time, I talked about this game. Uh, the players recovered a tooth from him uh, that they could use as a weapon, but they weren't really using it, so they sold it off to a collector. Uh, and that collector happened to be also working on a large uh, clockwork dragon. Uh, it seemed to intend to use <laughs> the tooth as part of it. <laughs> And I'm oh sure nothing boy. will happen. I don't know what you're worried about. I'm so excited. All your players are going to be so pissed. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. But yeah, uh, they caught up with Athilda, who then asked for some help with some bandits, which is a storyline I had set up like a session or two ago, uh, mm -hmm. because they came across a cart that had been ambushed. 
Uh, she asked for if the party could help out with a small camp of them that was nearby town. Um, she couldn't take her guard out there because it would leave the town, you know, undefended for some time. Mm -hmm. uh, and they did also uh, they did also go to visit Edgar's older brother, uh, Edgar being the youngest of four siblings, um, one brother being not in town at the time, and the eldest one being the current lord of Dunshold. Um and his oldest brother was very immediately dismissive of Edgar, uh, barely gave him a time of day when they met, uh, largely complained about Edgar's impact on the town, which wow. Ithilda wasn't too happy about. This is, this is, the, this is like a jam-packed narrative smorgasbord of emotions, man. <laughs> it was! <laughs> you know what That's was kind of frustrating, though, is... Uh, the player playing Edgar gave him, like, this Irish accent. <laughs> yeah. And then when I had Edgar's backstory, and I saw where they were traveling, I knew where they would end up, it was like, I gotta practice an Irish accent. <laughs> <laughs> I don't <laughs> I don't know if it went very well, but it was very entertaining. <laughs> nice, nice. It was largely terrible, but... <laughs> um... At least it worked for the most part. <laughs> I was just trying to channel like Liam Neeson and then just like do a different pitch. True, true. Um, but yeah, so they rested up in the town. The plan to deal with the bandits the next day. A burglar did sneak in, trying to like figure out what this party of adventurers was doing here. Uh, he was quickly grabbed and arrested, but he did drop some information about what to expect at that location. Uh, including a bandit by the name of Razor Robin, who was leading this small group of other bandits. Razor Robin? I was yep. like, why are you going to say Razor Fist? And I was like, <laughs> 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 The thought of that. <laughs> I was like, please. He's like, he just has a stump and it's <laughs> just a big knife on it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just like the the weakest side character villain ever. Just like a dude with a knife for a hand. Just call him good old knife hands. <laughs> I mean, there's plenty of bandits left, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. Look at some Razor Robin. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> she, Razor Robin sounds pretty scary. Uh, <laughs> you should be scared. He has hatchets. Oh, <laughs> hatchets, you say. <laughs> so yeah, they, they got breakfast, a field was there waiting for them, and they dropped off some horses, and of course, you know, I definitely had horse names, and I definitely didn't have to use a horse name generator. <laughs> that never <laughs> happened. <laughs> of course, of course. No, Always they, like, plan ahead. Every single <laughs> creature has a name. <laughs> they immediately posted a link to the same horse name generator that I was using in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, yeah. Okay. Damn. <laughs> busted like. <laughs> so they had to leave their own horse behind um, their horse which they named Sugar Cube Bing Bong oh yeah <laughs> and they got four different horses by the name of Flashbolt Snow Sparkle, Sky Flame and Thunder Ranger damn man, Thunder Ranger? bruh, like, <laughs> that's that is, that is the best horse <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> Thunder Ranger, Ranger was the smallest one, but the most determined. Yeah, yeah, obviously, obviously, big, big time hero energy, right? Ready, ready <laughs> to, to defy the the big world. The small horse finds himself in. <laughs> um, so yeah, to make a long session short, they traveled. They traveled out. They reached the bandit camp. Uh, they did some battle. I did. Um, fortunately, foundry lets you like search through the entire bestiary, and I found some higher level bandits, so I was able to use those. Uh, mm -hmm. But Edgar did 64 damage, so the party was able to win. <laughs> Edgar just demolished a dude, and everyone was like, I'm done. Yep. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they did end up killing Razor Robin, uh, who got some good oh, hits no. in on the druid, I think. Um, Razor Robin, he was the hero of his own story. <laughs> Give himself a nickname <laughs> and everything. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you know what's annoying is they killed Razor Robin, but they took one of the generic dudes hostage, and I was like, sure, take a guy I, I haven't named. Or that I totally have <laughs> named. <laughs> Fortunately, it was the end of the session, so I was able to think of a name for him by the next session, uh, but they never asked him his name. 
Because <laughs> I guess that's just how the game goes sometimes. Um, and then, yeah, that's when I get into Session 29. So for Session 28, though, I just really liked, you know, finally getting to that character's backstory because it's been sitting there for a while. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of the newish characters, pretty much all the new characters, because after all the characters like either died or went off elsewhere, uh, basically three out of the four members of the party are people who weren't there in the first session. Um, and very interestingly, they kind of all came from the same region. Oh. So, honestly, pretty much, this journey is going to take them through um, the places they have come from. Because the other person nice. is, like, way other side of the map. Yeah, it's nice. I actually kind of like that idea. I mean, your campaign seems to be, like, it is going to be running pretty long. And the amount of crits that could possibly happen and murder that could you know be done on pcs uh it'd be kind of cool by like the end of the campaign whenever the jacob coronum uh, the draco coronum is complete and like whatever the big bad is you're probably gonna plan that the party members have changed so much like they're all different from the people who started <laughs> right. this like humble quest becomes this generational like <laughs> like pick up the torch from like the last group kind of thing and like you know, uh, the the quest must go on kind of deal. I think it's kind of cool. It has like a like a big fat book kind of volume uh, a feel to it. A yeah, bit. at least at least from the beginnings, it's it's kind of cool. That is something I like about it. I mean, I kind of hope that the druid who's been around from session one uh, stays around just because I like that <laughs> idea. But who knows what'll happen? Yeah, but I mean, that's the thing too, right? Because sometimes like you complete a backstory for a character and it's like, well, I think I'm done. You know what I mean? Like this character is like, you're like, I want to go home now. You know what I mean? Like I want to go back to the Shire and just chill the fuck out. Right. Like <laughs> let who somebody knows? else handle it. If she yeah, wants to do knows? that, I'm so down. Like, like I, I just, and you know, again, I'm always a big fan of uh, PCs turning into NPCs and, you know, going off and maybe having uh, smaller adventures or like maybe just having mundane lives after, after a point. Right. Just like, seeing old friends again going back to their home just like you know when the quest is done or whatever maybe when the quest is halfway through and some other new group of young angsty teenagers takes up the mantle of <laughs> collecting all of the dragon orbs or whatever right yeah maybe yeah. I, I i don't know where any, all, any of this is gonna go quite frankly i'm excited i'm the biggest fan of the jacob corona crew by the way like i'm like i'm excited every time we, we talk about it <laughs> well Especially... fortunately i have another session to talk about <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> All right, so oh no, I don't. I don't mean to interrupt. I just mean like, <laughs> there's more where this came from. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Kaimeth Report needs to say. <laughs> you thought you could kill me, but I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> Kaimeth is dead. Okay, he got hit by a sword and he died. It could be like the Terminator. Like he just keeps coming back. <laughs> <laughs> You'll oh, you should back. have like John Connor show up and be like, "I was in the future." Where <laughs> took over. Oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't do time travel. I can't add a plot element like that when I have so much going on already. <laughs> oh my god, it'd be so funny. <laughs> it's too much. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, what if Kaivet got all of the the. Like, he actually collected all of the dragon orbs and the Jacob of Corona. <laughs> and that's why he had to send John Connor back in time to stop him. <laughs> Look, man, there's too many things going on for me to suddenly say, here's time travel. <laughs> Very tempting, though. I'm going to put that in my oh. ideas list. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm glad. I'm excited. <laughs> Um, but yeah, we got into the next session, um, <laughs> with the, uh, with the, with the bandits, um, they were sort of cleaning up at the camp there, they did some perception checks to see what loot they could find. Um, the one check that they did, it was, it wasn't terrible, but it wasn't good enough to find the super special thing that was there. So they tied up the bandit, they asked him some questions, they got some coded notes from around the camp. Um, which they were able later to get someone to translate to piece together that there was sort of a larger force of bandits uh, further north from the town. Um, but they were really only asked to deal with the ones that were close to Dunshold. Um, and for the moment, that would be enough to keep the town safe. 
Um, mostly because I, you know, if they wanted to go deal with it, I had a map there for it. That was the one yeah. thing I was sort of ready for. <laughs> Anything else, I didn't oh, okay. know what to do. Okay. But I left the option open, but they seemed to want to focus on their journey, which was fine by me. Because, uh, well, I mean, I was nervous, but you know. <laughs> um, so they got all that stuff, they started to head back to town. Um, and then I had the uh, the player, the witch player, um, Talia, because um, she was riding the largest horse, um, which was, uh, if I check my horse notes again, <laughs> the largest one was Skyflame. So uh, she had the responsibility of carrying the bandit with her, and she did a perception check. Uh, I think it was like a crit, or it was at least 30-something. Um, and she was able to notice that, one, the bandit was trying to get out of his bonds, uh, but two, he was particularly interested in one specific box. So this is a situation where I was like looking at random items that could be maybe good loot for this encounter. And I saw this one thing and I was like, this is absurd and interesting. So I'm going to use it. And a whole plot line has spun out of this. Nice. So the box that he was looking at was a probably a bit more colorful than the other ones that were there and it was looking like it was about to be delivered to the city that they were going to um and it had the logo for a company named crackles on it uh and with some investigation they were able to discover that it was related to carlisle crackle who is this candy manufacturer uh whose main factory is located in the next city um Zero relation to anyone named Willy Wonka. I don't even know what that oh. is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it is it is Carlisle Crackle, a totally different thing. Okay, um, so a, a big scale manufacturer of candies and a and a box that was supposed to be delivered there. Yes. At a bandit camp in the middle of like the the winter land. <laughs> Like, yeah, <laughs> essentially, like it was like it was part of some stuff that was stolen from carts. Oh. Uh, they found other boxes and stuff. That's where they found the rest of the loot uh, right. and the notes the, and everything. The, the great cart network of, <laughs> of course, that's how things <laughs> get around, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. In this anachronistic time, they find themselves in. <laughs> <laughs> so they open the box, and it's full of like these specially made candy sticks. Um, which there were exactly 67 of, because I rolled a d50 plus 50 to see how many would be in there. Um, but there was one that stood out uh, from the rest, one that was sort of like snake-shaped. Uh, they could tell that magic was coming off of it, they could tell it was conjuration magic, but they couldn't specifically tell what this stick of candy did. And they wouldn't know for a couple more days. Oh, okay. Um... The bard player, Randy, uh, suggested finding an elderly bedridden person to identify it, uh, making an obvious reference to a story about some guy uh, by the name of Willy Wonka, which, again, I've never heard of. <laughs> hmm, hmm. You're right, you're right. Hmm, hmm. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. But they took the guy prisoner, and they headed back into town. Um, they dropped him off in the prison, and they told Ithilda about everything that went on. Uh, they rested and prepared the next day to head off to the main capital city, uh, which was sort of not too far from Dunshold. Essentially, there's like this sort of lake in the middle of the map uh, that you can take a short boat ride across. You go through another small town and then you're at uh, the main capital city. Or you can just go around the whole thing, which is a bit longer, but you don't have to pay for the boat ride. Uh, fortunately, since they did a favor for the town, uh, they were able to get that ride for free. Nice. So they woke up the next day, uh, and a few things happened. One of them being Athilda was very insistent on having a spar with her brother. Um, okay. So for nice. Athilda, I just used, like, Captain of the Guard stats, but I gave her a Halberd, because I specifically mentioned that as something she had. Um, oh, nice. But I forgot Halberds are... Uh, I should have just let her use the Halberd with one hand, because that would have been super cool, but I don't know if that was yeah, her thing. Well, I mean, you could just told her that she was thick so she could just hold in one hand because that's how cool she is and yeah i should have gone for Egger, it <laughs> Egger sounds mad cool so like 
characters. <laughs> like, I just assume everybody in her family are just like super OP, like do like a hundred damage kind of people, right? Like, <laughs> basically. <laughs> yeah, I should have gone for it. Um, because I realized like afterwards, a lot of the Captain of the Guard abilities, like they have like shield block and stuff, and I was like, oh no, I can't use the shield. I'm using two hands. Boo. <laughs> well, you could just call it block and guard. Look, man. <laughs> just take the, sh the, the rules are written for a reason. <laughs> Oh my god, Calvin. <laughs> Don't kill me. <laughs> you could have changed it to be like, Perry. <laughs> Whatever would have been like, oh, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, I could have. Um, but honestly, I went in there uh, pretty arrogant about my luck. <laughs> um, and then I got several bad die rolls. Every single one was terrible. Athilda could not land a single blow on Edgar as he was like smashing through her HP. Oh, uh, did you did you end up using like the dual rules from uh, Pathfinder? Uh, I had them in my notes, but then I kind of just like didn't use them. I don't know. I just wanted to. I don't know. I kind of just like focused on the battle between the two of them. I guess I could have used it if I wanted to spice things up a bit. Um, but I really thought they would more like just like smash into each other than try to use like those different charisma abilities. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But like. I, I don't know, I'm a big fan of those dueling rules because, you know, it, it kind of changes things up from, like, smash, smash, smash to smash, 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 right? Like, it's just like, you know, there's some cool moments where you could be like, lol, I bluffed you. Or like, lol, I, I knew you were going to bluff me, so I, I looked out for it. And it's kind of one of those things, like, you activated my trap card, like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. It's, it's, like, it's I, I definitely see, like, a great purpose for them. I just didn't know if that fit for this particular instance. I figured it would just be more like a test of strength and regular initiative was fine enough for that. Sure, you should have just done an arm wrestling contest. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> no, that's your thing. <laughs> it true, true. I mean, arm wrestling contest, you could just wrestle, you just punch each other. Like It's all just like throwing your big numbers at each other until one of you stops, right? So <laughs> True. <laughs> But yeah, they sparred, uh, Edgar won, uh, they're about to head off. Um, Athilda, before they left, mentioned that her guards did see someone who seemed like they were trying to follow the party, um, who they described as, and the description they got was very familiar to the one they had seen following them into the branches, the larger city that they had left before. Mm -hmm. um, but with the shortcut across the water that they were about that they were about to take, uh, it seems like this person, if they were following them, was either going to lose them or be far off. So who knows what's going to happen with that? Nice, nice. I know, Mystery. but it's not going to happen yet. So they arrived at a small port by the name of Talos Port, uh, which would lead them across the lake to a place called Mage's Basin, which is sort of like it takes it took the ruins of an old tower. Uh, reformed it to like an alchemical lab um, and that's just north of Novaborn which is the large capital city of Tovaros which is where they were going to pass through and also where the bard used to live oh cool so yeah as I got on the boat there were a couple other people there uh, one dwarf who like slept through the whole ride and one elven alchemist who was going there to be an assistant to a very popular alchemist there uh, was very nervous of the druid's pet, uh, but the dr the druid player had, for whatever reason, taken the box of candies, and was just like giving them out to people. <laughs> <laughs> Here, take this plot relevant item, random NPC. <laughs> Basically, so yeah, they stopped. They they stopped to ask the dock master like his name and backstory. <laughs> I was like, yeah, of course I have that. His name is uh tap 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 tap. <laughs> As I'm looking up my list of names. <laughs> <laughs> his name is Docs. <laughs> <laughs> I've been a dock master my entire life. Came from a family of dock masters, my you. <laughs> Go way back ten generations to my grandpappy, Docs in the smooth, Docs in the fifth or something. <laughs> okay. <laughs> not far off uh, one, one person actually suggested a name that was far too similar to a named character that I actually have prepared so I was like funny but I can't actually use that nice nice um, but yeah so they gave that guy candy they gave this elf a candy um, she got to talking to Randy the bard who um, 
played a bit of a song for her, and she was really into it. So this bard, Randy, uh, Randy Copperfoot, uh, bearing no relation to Johnny Silverhand at all. <laughs> Gotta bring the system down, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually his thing. I know, because he's... <laughs> Randy Copperfoot. So does he just not have like shoes on or something? So you know that he has like a Copperfoot. I don't know if anyone's seen his feet. <laughs> they just take his word. That is well, Copperfoot. I guess is a name, not like. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> um, so I guess we can describe Randy a bit. Um, essentially, and this is something that the party is aware of, so I can talk about it openly. Uh, essentially, he was a popular bard a few decades ago, about 50 years ago, in Novaborn. He was a very popular underground artist in the band Paladin. Um, nice. Real metal. <laughs> and yeah, they did that kind of, like, you know, rebellious youth music, uh, disobey your parents, disobey authority. They kind of inspired people, um, and they are also very popular with goblins. Uh, unfortunately they ran afoul of some certain important nobles within the city. Uh, while the party doesn't know the entire details, uh, they do know that Randy's soul ended up being trapped in this key object uh, by this secretive network of spy bards. Um, the Bards of the Silent Song, who, uh, <laughs> who were sort of formed because bards are really able to travel very... Like, they can travel anywhere pretty openly. Um, they can get into most places. So this small group is used as, like, you know, spies, scouts, agents, and things like that. Right, um, right. And this particular network, uh, they had this thing going on, which I haven't fully described to them yet, so I'm going to avoid saying too much about it. But it did involve putting souls of prisoners into these magical keys that could be resummoned later, uh, including Randy's, which was resummoned for the purpose of aligning with this party to recover the Crown of Dragons, this very important object by a nefarious secret organization of bards? Hmm. Okay. <laughs> yeah, man, because who's going to question why a bard is traveling somewhere? They just see a guy with a loot on a cart, and it's like, okay, whatever. I don't need to pay attention That's to this true. person. Right. Most and most nobles probably be like, sick bard, come to my house, play for my dinner party. Like, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> nice. Okay, cool. I mean, now I'm worried. Oh, no. You should be. <laughs> Copperfoot. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, this elf, uh, Sayla, she was very into the music. It was certainly, you know, rebelled against her normal, uh, she looked like a very proper and put together kind of person. Uh, she was blushing very heavily the more she was talking to Randy. Uh, the players were super into it. <laughs> like, uh, I guess they found her flirty and cute. Nice, nice. Um, but yeah, she recommended a tavern that they could stay at. Uh, they were able to stay there. They got some food and drink. Uh, Valzana, the druid, uh, she was she was particularly interested in, in, Ma in Mage's Basin, which again is a location where they do a lot of alchemical work. Um, it's also the place where the formula for the monster energy drink magic formulas were discovered. Nice. <laughs> uh, so she did want to do some investigation on that. So we dealt with that. Uh, and then they headed to Novaborn. Um, and then they had another random encounter uh, which was a very interesting one. Uh, fortunately for me, they ended up uh, picking another new creature that I'd, that I'd read about, an iridescent elephant, which is sort of like, it's like an iridescent creature is like a normal creature, but it's been cursed to like glow brightly. Um, it does they, cause... <laughs> and it's, a, I, it's, a, it's a, an elephant, <laughs> just a bright ass elephant. <laughs> it's literally just a bright elephant. <laughs> It does have some powers. You can do, like, color sprays. Uh, but it's essentially an elephant that's been given, like, the ability to like glow. A, and like it, it sprays out of his trunk? Like a... Yes. Like a, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> I, I don't know how that works, but, like, all right. <laughs> it's, like, it's not, like, a beam out of its trunk. And then I think when it does, like, a foot attack, anyone within five feet gets the effect of color spray. If I'm oh, remembering cool, it. Oh, cool, It should have laser beams out of its eyes, too, man. And, like, <laughs> it probably like, could. It could. It should fly too, like when it like leaves like a rainbow trail behind. That'd be dope. That's like that's like a Ramon version of that. It's just like I think you can, <laughs> I think you can do that. I think iridescent is a template you can put on stuff. Uh, the example they give you though is an elephant, and it was just such a evocative image to me that I was like, yes, I need it. 
Designers, you're right. It should have been an elephant the entire time. Just <laughs> something so ridiculous. <laughs> but yeah, like fortunately it was good timing because they're coming into this uh, the, this massive city and there's a celebration obviously for the end of the year. Um, that's totally not Christmas. I don't know what that is. Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Who's Santa Claus? <laughs> <laughs> Never heard of him. <laughs> so yeah, um, they ran into this circus that was on the way there. They had this iridescent elephant. The iridescent process does harm the animal. So the druid kind of took the lead on trying to calm this thing down and avoid combat. Uh, between her and the bard doing like some calming spells, they were able to do so. Um, and then they sort of got into an argument with the people who were running the circus. Uh, they... <laughs> There was some discussion, and there's a moment when I was like, oh no, I shouldn't have put this in front of them. There was some discussion of them taking the elephant. Nice. Nice. And the, then just riding it into victory? like. <laughs> I mean, because it, it's as fast as a horse, and it has more strength. So they don't have to deal with a two-person cart anymore. <laughs> now they can just have a flying rainbow elephant? Calvin, come on. That's like goals. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> if they want it, it's certainly in play. They did take some paperwork from these guys, um, like their official kind of paperwork that they need for the event, just to have like an insurance policy to make sure they don't run away. Because there was some discussion about what to do with the elephant after all the events. Um, they want The party wants them to let the elephant go. Uh, obviously, the circus doesn't want to let it go. So since the, since the party saved their lives, they were willing to discuss that further. So... That's a thing that's in play now. That's another plate that's spinning. Which, uh, which I have to worry about. <laughs> nice, nice. Um, and yeah, they ended up getting to Novaborn, which is, again, one of the largest cities. Um, I think it is the second largest physically. Uh, the largest one being one actually we went to in our campaign that I was running for you uh, and Tim and Chibi. Ah. Um, you, when you went to that city, that was sort of like that commerce city dedicated to Abadar. Um, yeah, yeah. That one would be that one was the, like the physically largest one. Mm -hmm. uh, but this one would be like the most important one. Oh, okay, like like uh, politically important. Yes. Gotcha. Um, and they immediately went to like the uh, <laughs> the lower parts of the city. Uh, I did like describe like different like camps and small neighborhoods to sort of like patched together from like old tents and small houses that were built on the outside of the city uh, against the walls and stuff like that. And then when mm -hmm. they got in, like there was like a whole hustle and bustle of activity, uh, shouts at people, um, buildings larger than many of them are used to. Uh, <laughs> I was very much relying on my every experience I have going to Toronto when describing this city. <laughs> nice, nice. Um, and yeah, they ended up heading towards Randy's old place, his old apartment. Uh, I thought they were going to stay there, but they did something more interesting there. Um, so a lot of this was kind of uh, Randy's player making stuff up as we went on, which was great for me, because it gave me things to bounce back with, um, and it helped me mm. develop some ideas about what else could be here. Uh, so they found the old building, um, which was currently being run by the son of the previous owner, uh, Randy uh, I think he got a crit on this perception check. Uh, it was kind of an offhand perception check, and then he got a crit on it. And I was like, okay, cool. <laughs> Here's all the information. Uh, but he did recognize that the half orc currently running it was the son of the previous human owner. Um, and then the player mentioned room 712. And I was like, okay, let's see where this is going. <laughs> this was a mystery for me. So they headed up to room 712, which I kind of gave him a description for it. Um, and then between him and myself, we were kind of walking through, like, this unique thing that he has to do to open it. Like, he has to put his hand in the keyhole, uh, and then go to the next adjoining building, uh, if there's another secret wall there. And then if you turn something in the wall, it opens a door that leads into room 7, apartment 712, rather. What? Okay. <laughs> and I was like, sure, absolutely, that sounds brilliant. <laughs> And yeah, they were able to get into Randy's old apartment, which was, of course, because no one's been able to open apartment 712 for 50 years, was covered in layers and layers of dust. Mm -hmm. uh, 
But yeah, he set about to seeing what was left of his old stuff. There was old posters, old fan mail, uh, some rude letters written to that uh, one noble that they pissed off. Uh, but what was most dramatic, uh, well, a couple of things. First, they did find some old posters of the band, uh, where I was able to give some, like, the names of the band and some descriptions on them. Mm -hmm. Uh, but what was most dramatic is there was one particular spot where Randy would have his loot mounted, uh, and that mount was empty. <gasps> he did some more investigation looking for a secret safe he had under his bed. Uh, that secret safe was empty as well. Oh no, he's been jacked. Uh, yep. <laughs> so yeah, then they heard some commotion outside. It seemed like the half orc who ran the place was coming back up to see what they were doing. Uh, also to mock them for not being able to get the room open. So while Randy was out there distracting them, the rest of the party disrespected his privacy <laughs> and went through the rest of his stuff. Um, they they learned some new things, um, you know, just basically seeing like what kind of fan mail was written, what kind of influence Randy had on people. Uh, also, a whole lot of those letters were written, quote unquote, by goblins. Uh, because okay. again, Paladin was very popular with goblins. <laughs> nice. And yeah, they sort of started about investigating like who was left in the band, uh, who could have taken that loot. The answer was fairly obvious because there was one elven member of the band who could still be alive after five decades. Yeah, yeah. Um, so they did some investigation. They went to like an old pub that Randy used to visit regularly. Uh, the area had been largely gentrified, though. <laughs> so, uh, while it was originally named the Dirty Bird Pub, it had been changed to Falcons. Oh, wow. Okay, okay. <laughs> so they did a bit this of like, investigation there. Yeah? This is pretty cool. Like, <laughs> I like that. It's like, nothing ever stays the same in Night City. Exactly. Like, <laughs> 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 What's Night City? I don't know what <laughs> Nova Porn City <laughs> like <laughs> this is how you become a legend <laughs> I can't even man I can't even like <laughs> yeah man steampunk 2077 <laughs> so yeah they did some investigation uh, they also did a bit more investigation into the crackles company uh, they learned the neighborhood that the factory was in, and they also identified the actual object itself. It is a wondrous figurine, uh, a candy constrictor. I don't know if I gave them the name of it, but I did explain the function of it, which is essentially that if you do the right magical process, uh, this candy stick can turn into a snake. Oh, okay. And like, they, for some reason, seem to suspect that it has something to do with maybe a contest and some sort of tour of the factory. I don't know where they're getting this idea from. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. I mean... <laughs> okay. Wait, so you're telling me that, like, when you get the thing and you're like, Oh, cool, a snake. And you're like, I got the snake. And they're like, welcome to the factory. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Oh my god. <laughs> so you have to defend yourself from a snake coming alive. And then you're like, okay, you're a good kid. Come on. I never said it was hostile. Factory. <laughs> <laughs> Just one lick will send you straight to the hospital. <laughs> yeah. Um, this was like, this was just me seeing a cool item. And then putting it there because I wanted to use it because I thought it was cool. And then the players were like, oh, this is definitely this thing. And I was like, yeah, sure. <laughs> it totally is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That's that's the, that's the one of the things I like about this party. That's what I really liked about this session is that the party was very much leading a lot of it. <laughs> mm -hmm. This session is always pretty fun. Like, I, I'll flim flam and pretend like I know everything that exists all the time, but I, I like those moments where the party is like, oh, what if this is the thing? And oh, here's how this door probably works. And I'm like, yeah, definitely. That's for sure how it is. Give me those oh, ideas yeah. so I can remember them yeah. and then recycle them for use later. For sure. I mean, also, like, you're surprised too. Like, very few times in the DM, you get to be surprised, right? Right. Because, you know. You have perfect perfect knowledge of the situation, but you know, players come up with a cool idea. You're like, damn, that's good, right? Like, yeah, like, basically. 
Um, so to finish off the session, they found out that information about the Crackles company. Uh, but they also did some more investigation. They went to another CD bar where they found an old poster of the Elven bandmate. Uh, <laughs> a bandmate by the name of Darren, uh, which is mm. based on a longtime inside joke between me and the player. Uh, involving some stuff that happened in the Sims game. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> originally, uh, this elf went by the... So the band was... It was Randy, um, a halfling Davris, um, a human fam Starden, and the elf Darren Cosmic Contraption was his whole name, or at least the name that he used. Uh, they found a poster um, that was like fairly recent, maybe a couple of decades old, uh, relatively recent compared to Randy. Um, and it seemed like Darren rebranded himself, now just going with the name Darren, using a very fancy font. And it looked like he also changed up his clothing, no more of like the face paint and stuff like that that was existing in the Paladin band. Instead, it was just like a very clean cut look. He had a leopard print cape. And in the poster, he had a loot that was very familiar to Randy. Uh, it was the very same one that had been stolen from apartment 712. Oh, no. So, yeah, now they know what happened to it. I don't know what they're going to do about that. Hopefully, hopefully, like, some sort of violence. Yeah, with words. Possible. Word violence. Like a battle of the bands. <laughs> like... <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Hey man, you sold out. <laughs> and I'll, sh- I'll show you a real few success. <laughs> and then you could use the party, the party roll, where all, everybody else joins in and makes this band with Randy as the lead, <laughs> and like the druids on drums. <laughs> if they do that, that would be phenomenal. <laughs> but yeah, like majority of the stuff that happened in Nobleborn, um, <laughs> I didn't really know where that was going or what was going to happen because a lot of it was guided by the player just doing his thing. And I was like, yeah, sure, that's definitely what happens. And then here's this and this. And then this guy comes back and he'll talk to you for a bit. The party's in there, so they're looking around. Uh, let me look at this character's notes so I can see what kind of thing they would find. Here's this noble they pissed off. Here's some information on that. Here's what happened to them. Um, their child is in power now, so maybe something's going on there. Like, I don't know. I, I was very nervous going to this session because I felt like I had nothing prepared. Um, but I had enough to work with, I realized, which is uh, very lucky for me. I guess I do better in improv than I do in pre-planning. I feel like that way too all the time. It's like if when stuff goes off the cuff, it, it feels like it flows a little better somehow. Like, <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, you're not too stressed out about hitting all those plot points you wrote down. You're just kind of like, yeah, let's let's run with this idea, you know? So, yeah, pretty much. Like, there's less there's less need for like, oh, I got to plan and figure things out and have things ready, and more like, here's what needs to happen in the moment. Here's what needs to exist in the moment. So here it is. And then you can deal with the consequences of that and follow those plot threads wherever they might end up leading you. Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. And that's like a... I feel like the the more experience uh, you get as a DM, the, the better you feel about leaving those questions unanswered, like, in the moment and just being like, I'll resolve this later. Because, like, yeah, I mean, you only have to deal with it within the span of four hours and then you have, like, maybe a week or, or two weeks, maybe more to figure out all the little degree details of it. And you just set it aside till when it's relevant. Yeah. Yeah. Cause now I have time to figure out like all the crackles stuff, all the, uh, the Darren stuff, the loot stuff. Um, I do have like, because where the party was traveling for the witch's patron, I have a lot of that ready because it's just been around as a plot point for a long time. So that I'm nervous about, but <laughs> I mean, they'll get there when they get there. Hey, man. I mean, the end of the year is looming. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that 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 one I'm very excited about. I I've had those things sort of simmering for a while, and I keep going back to them and being like, oh, what if I did this? What if I did this? And now I'm at a point where it's like, okay, I gotta do it. 
I got a yeah, for sure. But yeah, I hope they nice. uh, stay in Novaborn for a bit. I, I, I want to see what they do with this whole thing. I want to see what they do with this loot. Um, I'm definitely like, <laughs> I, I I have some stats and stuff for the loot, uh, but I'm curious to see how they turn out. That's cool, man. I mean, it sounds like your game is really uh, a bunch of little short stories, like little short adventures compiled up together, like on the backdrop of, yes, we have to get the MacGuffins together, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Like, to be fair, like the the, tr the chocolate factory thing, this whole loot thing, the, the even just like the whole, uh, you know, being the, the rent of the litter in a family full of warriors who just like, you know, you fucked up one time and ruined, brung shame to the family. Now, like bandit deal like it's like all, all that kind of stuff just seems to be like you can spin that off into whole campaigns i think from that point but you know i'm still excited to get at least either the coronum or the draco like you know, like one of them like i want them to get one of them they are they are on the way to the blue stone they're almost there uh just a couple more stops. <laughs> Shit. But yeah, very excited. What? And yeah, like, we also got to have like that one moment um, with the character's older brother. They uh, they actually got to patch things up a bit because they were sort of in like this garden where their mother was buried, and they had a bit of a conversation. And you know, yeah. I actually managed to pull off the Irish accent for a bit. But <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's turned out really well, and I'm just really, I don't know. I gotta stop getting in my own head about sessions because with this like they always turn out well i mean yeah every time we, we uh we kind of recap the drink of corona i'm always like damn uh all these good ideas uh i'm glad that it worked out like <laughs> you know so i can keep hearing the adventures of, of that those guys and uh your campaign and stuff so yeah it's i i think you're as, as an outsider looking in, I think it's I think it's working. Whatever you're doing, definitely. I should have let Athilda one hand the halberd, but other than that, I think everything went great. I think you just you just goofed on semantics, man. Like this yeah, she's a badass warrior lady. She could just like just if you just said that. Oh, she has a move where she just throws you out a window. Everyone been like, yeah, that probably makes sense. Like that checks. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Sometimes it's like. Oh, I probably should just let them do whatever, and then, but it's like, oh, but I already—they already have these abilities. Oh, this doesn't work. Ah, uh, fine, I'm in it for the long haul. But some stuff, it's like, yeah, I don't know where this is going. Let's pull on this thread and see what happens. <laughs> this is a journey for all of us. Yeah, yeah, nice, nice. I like that. Like, it's, it's, uh, you know, uh, take a little break from, you know, uh, world-shattering, plot-relevant bullshit to being like i'm just gonna go home and talk to my older siblings or damn it my bandmate stole my guitar like <laughs> <laughs> simpler things you know what I mean? <laughs> just oh, a man. little bit of the a little bit of the the, the cure like you know your campaign can be like big and small at the same time you know <laughs> like you don't have to always just be pedaling your way to the or like you know uh, uh foot to the floor rocking your way to the the end you could just take some time to you know smell the roses or go punch your dad or something like i don't know <laughs> yeah but they can't take too much time it's <laughs> true it's true because we're on i think like the third or the fourth or the of the last month so uh okay. they they gotta hurry up yes nice, nice there's only 31 days in this month yeah i think i have to like mine uh everybody else's backstory to be fair in the pirate campaign uh i've been leaning on helen's backstory a lot because uh, you gave a lot of information so it was like really easy to like map it to a like location so anytime you guys got went there it was like lol now it's the helen show a little bit like <laughs> but it was less of like the helen show and more like i just get to do stuff to helen and and just reveal utter nonsense to your character your character is just like what <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> you know i love plot twists man yeah you just get to be the the teen protagonist in your in your, your <laughs> own little mini series for a couple of sessions <laughs> you're like what do you mean i'm the chosen one <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean my blood is tasty <laughs> Uh, I'm actually pretty excited uh, to have uh, <laughs> I forgot her. Angie to have oh Angie God. back on the, on the ship. <laughs> Can't believe they brought Angie onto my boat. I'm so angry. <laughs> no, it's cool. It's cool. It's cool. Angie's gonna, Angie's gonna be the 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 weird one. <laughs> you don't have a weird one. I mean, 
Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I have some odd ones. I don't know about weird ones. <laughs> yeah, like, like, Crow's the straight man. Uh, uh, like, um, Jasper's, Jasper's the helpful one. Uh, Davis is the fancy one. Orgwak is the, uh, Almost like the responsible one, actually. But, like speaks. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> like, like Davis, like, 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 like Jasper's your right hand person in like you know running the ship and stuff. But like Orgwak, you talk to Orgwak when you're like, man, I need some guidance. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like every time it's like Orgwak, Orgwak just like silently tries to mime <laughs> words of advice to you. <laughs> <laughs> he always gives the best the best advice. <laughs> yeah, no, oh Angie's here. <laughs> yeah, well I will see where that's going. It's cool. So now like I can have I have like a I have a cool like so so I have like a, a cool technical historical person who can tell you the history and things and nerd out and stuff. Now I have a crazy person who can tell you about vibes and shit. <laughs> like <laughs> I mean, we, we we could use more casters on the ship. I'm sure. <laughs> I think we're about even now, uh, to be fair, because like you got uh, Rain, uh, Angie, uh, Jasper, and oh, and um, uh, Brian. <laughs> I forgot she was still on the ship. Brian yeah. technically is still on the ship. Yeah, although she's less of like a caster and more of a baker. There's too uh, many people with, on the boat. <laughs> With too much, there's too many protagonists with cool blood powers. <laughs> I just realized. I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> there's two. Well, I mean, I mean, your your blood is weird and cursed, and hags yeah, like to drink it. Helen so. and Brian, right? Yeah, and yeah, and Brian has Brian's blood had the power to unpetrify an ancient dragon, whatever that means. Yeah, so like. So, you know, I mean, you guys could have some solace in the fact that you guys are thrust into a thing that you don't ever want to be in. <laughs> so, who knows? Maybe some cool character development might happen through there. Just be like, wow, it feels like we're both the main characters in our own story. <laughs> Never. I'm going to be a pirate forever. <laughs> no, destiny. Oh, man. It's yeah, I'm excited new. for that. I'm excited to play the next session of this. I have some of the loot stuff. Um, there is like a special loot in Pathfinder 2 uh, but I wasn't a super big fan of it because it's mostly just like a loot that you can also use as a club and it's like nah. <laughs> like that's Thanks, okay <laughs> 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 like that's okay at lower levels but I want to do something more special with it and I think I found something and I'm going to see if I can adapt it Pathfinder Writer is like, just like this thing's a guitar but it's also an axe. It's just like, <laughs> oh, cool. Thanks, Pathfinder. That would be cooler than the loot that's a club, man. <laughs> like... <laughs> yeah, it's it's not, I don't know, it's, it's like 1d4. It's like, what is that? You're level 7. <laughs> don't touch 1d4. Get out of here. True, but it's, but it's like a magical weapon, so like, I guess technically you could double up so you don't have to have like a weapon to switch out. So I, I know what they're doing because you can like make it like magical and use it as an actual weapon so you don't, you don't have to actually switch out your weapon or do anything to something else right like you could just have a loot and that's like the thing that you have but like i was like come on you have a magical loot like what the hell like you should be able to like do cool m music stuff with it exactly that's 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 my thought like it should have more cool effects like i can see how this would be useful if you're like a like you're like if you're like a low level bard or whatever um, yeah. But for this party at this level, I want to give it something cooler, and I have some ideas. I have a thing, so All right. yeah. yeah, cool. Yeah. Well, well, I, for me, I, I love talking about magical items. I would just make it like a staff, but like you can record bardic stuff in it. So like you can just, I don't know how bardic powers work. I don't know how like the actual uh, spell situation works, but it'd be cool if it was like you can store songs in it or something, and then like so when you could you just have more. It, it, uh, ability to play more of them or like it would be cooler if like there's just a, a bunch of magical lutes and instruments but they all have specific like songs attached to them and if you were like a good enough bard to play them like it'll just like you know like the song that like blows up the world or something like that <laughs> like, <laughs> I should steal something just <laughs> yeah something epic I yeah. should steal ideas from Sonic Underground and just have like specific music instruments like here's the guitar and here's the drums and 
a keyboard, like, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Sonic Underground, that's that's they have special powers. I didn't even know that. I thought they're just rad. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, no, they had the instruments and it made them powerful or whatever. And then they had like I only really remember the cool theme song. <laughs> <laughs> okay, get your But anyways. <laughs> Uh, I, I now I'm I'm getting a bit off topic here, so I think we should end the episode. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> but yeah, man, I'm really excited to get back to them. I love playing with this group. Uh, we can do like a whole variation of things, and I don't know what we're gonna do next. They've given me a whole lot of ideas to work with, uh, so I know what I can prepare, and probably what I will not use because they'll not ask anybody their name or whatever. But yeah. Thanks a ton for listening to me ramble about this game and this party that I love playing with. Um, if you want to hear more of this kind of thing, <laughs> uh, why not hit that subscribe button and hit that bell notification so you get a notification every time we upload a new episode for you to listen with or listen, jeez, listen to. <laughs> okay, it's getting late. <laughs> uh, I do want to give off some shout outs uh, again to the United Paizo workers. Uh, who were officially recognized uh, recently by Paizo, so shout out to them. Again, I'm going to link to their site below. Um, nice. Our Lancer episodes, our Lancer streams, um, Celeste's NPG, uh, RPG uh, NPC guides for Lancer, uh, Celeste's Lancer RPG NPC guides, rather. Uh, that sort of describe how you can use different Lancer NPCs in your game. Uh, Shaka's Field Guide to Infukane, a unique Lancer setting that you can check out and get some files for your comp con. Uh, Untold Stories Project, where I'm playing uh, Mutants and Masterminds every week. Oh man, uh, we were off last week, so I didn't get to talk about this. Uh, the crossover episode. Oh yeah, crossing over. Yeah. How was, running, how was that with all those players? Uh, it was brilliant. <laughs> um, some people were dressing up. I tried to dress up as my character. It was just in, it meant like putting on a cool hood. Fortunately for me. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. <laughs> I didn't have to put like a whole welding mask on like some people. <laughs> um, but yeah, man, that went brilliantly. It was very much the superhero thing, like they punch for a bit and then they're friends kind of thing. Um, which involved us punching for a bit. Uh, but what I, I just, it had everything I loved about a superhero crossover. It had like actual story consequences because now there's there's items that are traded between the team we have a communicator that can reach back to them we have this connection with them now our stories briefly intersected there were like moments where certain characters interacted with each other that sort of changed their dynamic like the one character in our group who's normally the responsible one was talking to this other person who is the older more responsible one of their group and was like oh no i'm i'm no longer the adult here <laughs> <laughs> like oh damn wait a minute <laughs> have to take orders now <laughs> which was yeah that was, that was just like a brilliant moment um it, yeah er everything i like about a crossover a mix-up of powers uh one group of people like uh, i i, I want to describe it but i don't want to spoil too much but it was just involved like one particular superhero was kind of going like they were just like randomly attacking people so we had to sort of deal with them and we thought it had to do with something the other team was doing uh but then we had to work together to move this person to another dimension while some of us are trying to like fight each other and it just all worked out really well cool. and yeah i think my character is sort of friends with another member of that hero team so hopefully they get to hook up again nice nice um this particular superhero being a uh a octopus in a mech suit nice <laughs> so i really <laughs> want to have that team up between the archer and the octopus <laughs> <laughs> Be like the arrow and the tentacle or something <laughs> like, like spin-off show <laughs> yeah when's our miniseries <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna petition for that <laughs> yeah <laughs> shout out to that group uh, also linked below along with everything else that we've been talking about uh i think that's everything we have to cover all right although um okay. there might be there might be uh maybe one thing i'm forgetting i don't know what, what am i forgetting here Oh, I think you say it every single episode. <laughs> <laughs> I do, don't I? Uh, well, everybody out there, thanks a ton for listening. And I want to leave you with the most important advice of all, which is to keep on winning with dice. And we'll see you next week. See you guys.